Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and your host for today's show. Uh, we have an interesting topic today. We're going to be talking about um, GCs and corporate secretaries, boardroom red flags that trouble lies ahead. Uh, I know it's not a great topic in the sense of my guest, but uh, it's somebody who's very experienced in this space. And please welcome Bob Bostrom, who's a senior VP the GC and the Corporate Secretary for Abercrombie and Fitch. Welcome, Bob. Thanks, TK. Great to be with you. So, uh, when I said about your experience, um, it's true. You uh, were the GC for Freddie Mac. You also, prior to that, were at uh, NatWest, uh, the bank corp. Um, I'm not sure everybody remembers that <laughs> with all the mergers right. that have, have right. happened and whatever. Right. And you currently sit on the board of New Lion, which is a Toronto uh, exchange company. Um, so you've been the corporate secretary or the GC and outside advisor for in multiple boardrooms, some which have had significant governance challenges and needed guidance. In many of those cases, you sort of rode in and were one that helped sort of uh, get things straight. So, what have, first of all, why you, okay? And what did you learn from those experiences? I think every situation's unique, TK, in terms of what a board's looking for uh, when it's facing challenges. So, in, in my particular circumstances, the, the first one in NatWest, which for those of your audience that don't recall was in the 90s, one of the largest banks in the world, uh, NatWest and Barclays were the two major British clearing banks that had a very significant operation in the U.S. and they ran into um, significant regulatory and supervisory issues uh, with the recession of the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, they had a series of enforcement orders against them. So I was really brought in as a financial regulatory expert to help see them through those situations. And in that case, it was really the board in London that I was liaising with most significantly as well as the board here. Um, Freddie Mac experience was particularly intriguing, um, being brought in to help the board work through that actually is a transitional board. So one of the big issues GCs face is in a, in a moment of trans transformation or change is you have to also undergo a, a change in composition of the board at the same time that you're going through another type of crisis. So in that situation, uh, Freddie Mac had faced a $6 billion financial statement restatement. Um, I came in as one of the final members of the new management team to help lead the company through that. Um, part of that was also transitioning a whole new board of directors in, um, which is always a challenge for corporate secretary or general counsel to build a new trust relationship, to deal with a changing chairman, changing CEO, lead director, maybe you split the chair and the CEO, which significantly changes the dynamics of a board, especially when it's in the midst of a corporate crisis. Um, shortly after that, we went into the uh, conservatorship in 2008, which then led to yet another board, another significant corporate event, um, which, which really do raise significant challenges for GCs in building trust and maintaining relationships and in trying to provide a sense of stability uh, and transitional leadership uh, at the board level. Uh, obviously, one of the key things is a really terrific chairman or lead director who has the confidence of the board, who has the gravitas to deal with um, what is always a very strong desire to be critical of the prior board members. Um, and, and so to manage through a situation where you retain the trust of the legacy board members in a way that respects what they had done and also transitions in new board members is a big challenge for both the chair or CEO or, or, or lead director, but in, in, in particular for the general counsel. Yeah, my experience is that um, in addition to there needing to be board leadership, which, which we preach on the show, I think every other, every other yeah. episode about the importance of that, there's also the very delicate relationship between the CEO and board leadership or the board, mm -hmm. okay? 
um, you know, that has to, there has to be somebody that can sort of walk down the aisle together, but each respect each other's responsibilities. From all that you've been through, you know, relative to that, um, are there any sort of red flags that pop up for you that say, you know, boy, here are, you know, here's something, or, or in the reverse, are there things that are important to make sure happen? Obviously, this isn't within the GC or the corporate secretary's mm -hmm. control, but at some point in time, you have to recognize whether there's a problem or not. Well, and you do play a big role in, in that relationship. So whether it's setting board agendas, uh, participating in meetings, being the facilitator of information flow, um, helping to advise a CEO in terms of how much off-board meeting information should be exchanged, having a feel for what the board wants to hear, how much does the board want to hear, how informed does the board want to be, um, and making sure that, at least from a, a, a grounding point of view, that the CEO and the board are on the same page in terms of how much information each is willing to share and how much information each wants. And, and so a red flag is when there is a disparity between what the CEO or management is willing to give the board and what the board is asking for, right? The obvious one. And I think if you look back at a lot of the, the, the major, and I've done a lot of studies of the corporate crises from Enron through Volkswagen and Wells Fargo, and oftentimes one of the lessons learned is a disparity between the information being provided to the board and what management knows. And as, as you know, we, we all know, you can't manage what you don't know. Um, so that, that's a key red flag in my, in my opinion, also a very positive thing where a GC corporate secretary can play a very significant role in making sure those expectations are aligned. Um, another, another big red flag, obviously, is when you have either the CEO or the chair lead director calling you making observations about the other. Clearly, that's a sign that something's not working well, and it can be uh, um, performance related, or it can be the softer dynamics of the board related. He, he disrespected directors at a prior meeting. How should we deal with that? Um, there wasn't, there wasn't uh, the adequate response to questions. There isn't the adequate information flow. So there's a lot of things that can happen where the general counsel really ends up in the middle serving as a facilitator between those two factions. And not only are they a facilitator where both factions think that there's allegiance to them, okay, but your key responsibility as a GC is to the corporation. Yeah. So technically in the end, the, even though you have these relationships where everybody thinks it's their relationship, I'm sure the board does with the GC right. and certainly a CEO does. Right. I did when I was CEO. Right. I thought that was, that GC always had my back, mm -hmm. okay? But in reality, your ultimate responsibility is the corporation. Right. Tiki, I think you've hit the, the key issue that most GCs face today. I mean, it's always been a, a, an issue and a problem. But I think in, in today's world where the regulators expect you to be a gatekeeper, uh, where the expectations and relationships that the company, the CEO, management um, put on a, on a GC, these, these um, conflicts are heightened. And you're absolutely right. The GC's client actually is the corporation. Oftentimes you'll read acting through the board of directors. Um, but clearly the client is not management, it's not the CEO, and it's not executive officers. And when, when I, I talk to groups of aspiring general counsels, one of the points you really have to make is the hardest conversation you'll ever have with a CEO is when you tell the CEO, the CEO is not your client, the board is. Uh, and that's a very challenging conversation when and if you ever have to have yeah. it. Well, um, you've always seemed to carry both roles of the GC and the corporate secretary, and at least some of the positions that you have. So I want to, for our, we have a lot of corporate secretaries that, that follow the show. So I wanted to ask you, what is your best, what's the best piece of advice you could offer the corporate secretaries who sort of know <laughs> that a change needs to be made for one reason or another. Um, how do they do that and still sort of, how do they impact that or influence that and still keep their job? Well, it's a ch it's, that's the biggest challenge, right, TK? And, and I think that it starts before you get to that moment on a clear day. You've got to build a trust and a relationship with the board, with the chairman, with the lead director, if there is one, and with the CEO, so that when the stormy day comes, you have at least created a base of trust and confidence and relationship where you can be the persuasive counselor that you really need to be to um, advise either the CEO or the directors or the board or the, C or, or the chairman or the lead director through that difficult moment. But if you haven't 
on a clear day, built that relationship of trust and, and confidence, then when the stormy day comes, your ability to impact in a persuasive, positive way whatever challenge is facing the board and or the CEO become very, very challenging. Um, very salient advice from a very seasoned GC. Bob, I want to thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you on. The advice is always uh, well thought through, and I appreciate uh, you taking the time to join the show today. Thank you, TK. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.